Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Mesh Mixer from Autodesk. And I gotta start off by saying that this program is absolutely insane. There is no reason for its existence. I certainly do not understand why it exists. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you use it, but it is also extremely cool, extremely powerful, and extremely free. So that is why we are going to look at it. Now this is a product that Autodesk actually purchased, and it's weird. They've been shutting down purchase products left, right, and center lately, such as the uh, 123D line of programs have all been shut down but somehow Mesh Mixer is still out there, still being updated, and still completely free. I don't understand why they make this program available. I also don't understand this program's user interface or anything else about it, but the fact that it is quite cool. So what exactly is Mesh Mixer? Well, you can sort of think of it as like a kit bashing kit for creating 3D models. Um, you'll understand exactly what I mean by that in just a second. But what it allows you to do basically, and the, and the entire idea behind it is for creating 3D printable objects and it's got printer support for a number of different objects out there and of course you can import your own model in but what you'll find with this guy is it's actually um, one of the best sculpting applications available right now and I, I don't understand its purpose I don't understand how it can be so good and so obscure and then so weird at the same time. So without further ado, let's jump in. So what you could do is you come in and you could import and your object formats here are OBJ, PLY, STL, AMF, 3MF, OFF, and mix. Most people will bring in a static mesh in the form of an OBJ. They run just fine. We can bring in one of the ones that they've got right here. So we'll bring in this gremlin object file. And we'll just go ahead and import that. You can also start with a raw primitive. So here you go. And it's all designed to work and rotate on a single orbiting plane like this. Now what I found very strange is when I get through the bottom, you can never see it because there's something obscuring the way. Uh, but this is essentially the process you go with. I'm actually going to go ahead and not use that guy though. So instead we'll come in and we'll create, um, we'll replace this guy. And we'll just start with a sphere instead. So we got a sphere in the middle of our world, like so. And now what we can do is start mixing meshes together. And this is basically just like working with a Boolean. So we can grab uh, various different primitives. So you see here, we've got things like, I could bring in a set of legs and we could set um, some bare legs on our sphere. And I can do that, I literally drag them into the scene and then you place them on the surface. Uh, so I could go ahead, I can keep mishing and mashing in things that I want. Actually, that didn't commit. So you see, it is orientated towards the surface of the object. Like I said, this is like kit bashing. So once you've got it where you want it to be, and you see you've got a number of different settings for it, so bulging, bending, size, and so on. Also change out the type. I guess we're not really going to want to do that. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and accept it. We can just keep kit bashing stuff in here. So instead of legs and arms, we've got miscellaneous numbers, primitives, or we can bring in our own database of object parts. So we can we can import our own uh, meshes that we wanted to compose together this way. So let's say let's bring in a set of ears because sure, why not? And then just drag them onto your model, position them so you can orbit them around or you can put them where you want it to be. So grab, grab in the center there and you can place it in the world and you're ready. And we can do this again. It could have been more uh, straightforward. So it could have just been straight up primitives like um, a, a torus or another sphere on top of our sphere and again it is placed on or relative to the surface and then what we could do is we can actually go ahead and we could create another one on top of our existing sphere so i come in here drag that on that surface and this is now relative to the other sphere we're on and then i can grab this guy one of these guys is to shrink it down there we go so you see this surface is being created relative to the surface it was dragged on, or we can do it over here. So it automatically does surface normal snapping, and you can just sort of compose your model out of mixing and matching various different shapes together. And this isn't the most useful thing you've ever seen, but you get an idea of exactly what you're dealing with. You can change the selection mode between brush and lasso, but where this guy really shines is when you come over here to sculpting. So we come into the sculpting area of things, and there are a ton of different brushes for your traditional sculpting to stat task. So if I want to just drag off a surface, I can, if I want. So it's a standard on an orbiting plane. I can also set this guy up to be symmetric. You can see the line of symmetry being created right there. So we can drag shapes off like this. And really, if you do spend a little bit of time with this guy, it is honest to goodness, one of the best sculpting apps out there. And it's just crazy that this thing even exists. I don't understand it, uh, but hey, uh, I'm not gonna argue. Um, so we go here, we got your various different brushes. So we saw uh, we have the various different draws, flattens. We can bring out spikes from the surface. So we can obviously change the different settings for each one of those. Or we've got uh, movement, we've got a magnet, so we can do an attraction. 
Yeah, get rid of that. Um, we've got a robust smoothing and so on. Plus we can also get into vertex painting. Uh, so I can set the color here using this color. And come on, why are you not drawing? Uh, this does bring up one of the problems I actually found though, is I wanted to learn more about this guy. And if you go over to their website, it's available here. Again, this guy is completely free. Uh, and the manual is over at m -m -m manual. I, I imagine that means mex mixer, mex, meh, mesh mixer manual.com or mm manual.com. Unfortunately, this doesn't actually go anywhere. I will, of course, give you the link to this guy uh, available down below. So if you want to go ahead and get downloaded with this guy, it's about 100 megs in size. Uh, it's available for Windows and Mac only. Um, and yeah, it is, again, a completely free application. Head on back over here. Uh, in addition to the painting and stuff, we can also stamp surfaces on our surface, which is very strange. So I can bring this guy over here and we can paint our surface with those stamps. Don't really know why, but you can do that. And then you've got raw editing here as well. And you can do some really cool things here. Like we can do a pattern out of this guy. And again, this is why I wish the manual worked because I'd love to know how uh, the details of what a lot of these things do. But you see, you, you've got things like you can solidify a shape. Uh, you can do plane cuts in it. You can duplicate it or mirror it. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is instead make a pattern. And you see here, we've got a number of different options of how to go about making our patterns. We can make it a lattice pattern. And there is the shapes that it will work with or um, tiled tubing or uh, various different options here, tiled spheres. And then when you've got it in the way that you want it to be, just go ahead and do an accept. And it creates kind of this weird pattern Boolean um, subdivision of the shapes you just specified to create this solid manifolded mesh. So you can create these weird organic honeycomb shapes very, very, very quickly using this guy. Um, and then the key thing again here is this guy's designed for 3D printing and every single 3D printer you've ever heard of or not heard of is supported over here. I don't personally care about 3D printing, so I did not get into that. But if you're using this guy to say make uh, miniatures or something like that, it is definitely well supported for the various different printers that are out there. And then we've got some analysis tools here as well for doing things like measuring, slicing, orientation, stability. Um, and we've got some shader options here, very primitive. You can also go ahead and add your own shader, which is a PNG or JPEG file. Um, so we can just pick what kind of primitive we want, just drag it onto our surface, and then it is then applied. And now this would be absolutely useless if it just ended here, but fortunately it doesn't. If you created a shape that you actually like, something useful, something ready for your game, you can just come on down here to export, and you will notice you can export out in a number of different formats. And I'm talking pretty much all of them. OBJ format, STL, uh, 3MF, AMF, DAE. The only thing really missing there is FBX, which is kind of, sh no, no, not yet. Yeah, it is missing, which is shocking because that is actually Autodesk's own format. It's their own film box format. But you've got Collada, you've got OBJ. So you can easily slot this guy, the, the end result of what you created here, into your tool of choice. Um, Otherwise, it's very straightforward in using orbit view with the right mouse button, pan with the middle mouse button. Um, you've got quick selections over here for, for moving around. Uh, your navigation is all down here. If you are into 3D printing, you can print at the bottom here. Uh, you can have multiple objects in your scene. So you see here the, the raw object we used. We could turn that back on and get rid of the generated or you can have just the generated. So you can have multiple objects in a scene. And here's where it gets even more crazy. So I, let's say I want to do like new. So I've got an option here for screencasting, but I don't have an option here for creating a new scene. Uh, so yeah, it's a very strange program. Uh, the menus are uh, pretty straightforward here. You can, you can show wireframes on and off. The performance is always very, very good. I haven't choked it yet. Um, I haven't really tried too hard, but I've gotten over a million polygons without it slowing down at all. This is just an absolutely crazy program. I do wish the help was working right now because I do really want to dig in digger a bit deeper to find out what some of these other tools do. But realistically, what you would use this guy for in your own workflow is either for assembling objects out of a bunch of other objects. That's what your where your mech mesh comes in for uh, your mesh mixing comes in for sure. And then the sculpting tools in this thing are just staggeringly good. Um, so if, if you want a sculpting program and you don't like any of the existing ones, this is definitely a very powerful tool for sculpting. Um, 
And then again, you've got all these other editing tools, which unfortunately I can't dig into to a huge amount of detail because of the fact that the manual doesn't work, which does present a bit of a challenge. But this program, it's, it's a capable modeler. It works quite well. It has a bunch of very unique features, especially like I said, the kit bash meshing kind of stuff. There is one negative here, and I knew you were waiting for it, but it's not price. It's not anything like that. It's just, it spies on you by default. So if you want to turn that off, you have to agree to it to start. And then you come in here, go into about mesh mixer and just turn off data collection. And really that's it. Otherwise it never asks you for an email address or anything else. It just kind of spies on you to start from. And that is a feature that can be turned off. Otherwise this is a completely free program and it is i kind of consider it sort of one of a kind i can't think of any other programs that are all about you know composition and then finishing and the nice thing is since it's 3d printing it, it's not going to create you know non-manifold hulls so uh, what you get out of here should be a fairly usable solid mesh in whatever program you export it out to it's definitely a weird program but it's one i do recommend you check out you can do some really cool things in this thing and i imagine if you dig in deeper there's a lot of unique functionality here as well um so that is Autodesk Mesh Mixer, a hard to say, but completely free to use 3D application, sculpting, kit bashing, 3D printing tool that again, I have no idea why Autodesk make this available, especially for free, uh, but it is definitely worth being aware of. All right, what did you think? Uh, do you use this? Are you from an industry that uses this? Do you have any idea why Autodesk continues to make this product? What their angle is? How they're making money or anything like that? Because I don't get it. I, I don't understand the business model, but I'm not complaining. It's a cool program. Seems to still be somewhat under development. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, the, um, the help is down. But other than that, it is just... It's very, very cool, very, very free, and hopefully very, very useful to you. Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.